It's 1940. Britain is under attack. Nazi bombers fill the skies and only a handful of young pilots stand in their way. Their secret weapon? An engine that was never supposed to work. An engine that almost killed its test pilots. An engine that nearly bankrupted the company that built it. But this engine, the Rolls-Royce Merlin, didn't just power planes. It powered victory itself. Today, we're uncovering the shocking truth behind the most important engine ever built. This is our story of how Thunder became Triumph. Number 1. Born in the Shadows The year is 1933. While the world sleeps, a secret is taking shape in a dimly lit factory in Derby, England. We need to travel back to a time when war seemed impossible when the scars of the Great War were still fresh in our collective memory. In the quiet workshops of Rolls-Royce, a small team of engineers was working on something that would make our grandfathers weep with pride and our enemies tremble with fear. The Merlin wasn't born from grand military contracts or government mandates. It emerged from the shadows of corporate ambition and one man's obsession with perfection. Henry Royce, the company's legendary co-founder, had passed away just three years earlier, but his ghost haunted every blueprint, every calculation, every sleepless night spent in pursuit of engineering excellence. The project began with a simple designation, the PV-12, Private Venture 12. Even its name whispered secrecy. While other manufacturers focused on quantity, Rolls-Royce dared to chase something far more dangerous, absolute performance. They didn't know it yet, but they were crafting the sword that would sever the chains of tyranny. But perfection comes with a price, a price our engineers were about to pay in blood, sweat and shattered dreams. Number 2. Engineering a Miracle Inside the heart of the beast lay engineering brilliance that defied every convention of the time. What made the Merlin extraordinary wasn't just its power, it was how that power was born. We're talking about a V12 liquid-cooled masterpiece that could breathe fire at 27 litres of displacement. But the real genius wasn't in the size, it was in the details that no one could see. Twelve cylinders arranged in perfect harmony, each one precisely angled at 60 degrees. The engineers didn't just build an engine, they composed a symphony of controlled explosions. Every piston stroke was calculated, every valve timing perfected, every cooling passage designed to extract maximum performance from every drop of fuel. The supercharger was where magic met madness, a centrifugal compressor that could force-feed the engine with pressurized air, allowing it to maintain power even as our pilots climbed toward the heavens. At sea level, it produced 1,030 horsepower, but push it to 16,000 feet where the air grew thin and cold, and it still delivered crushing power when our boys needed it most. Yet for all this brilliance, there was a dark secret lurking beneath the polished aluminum, a flaw so fundamental that it nearly killed the Merlin before it ever had a chance to roar. Number 3. Too Flawed to Fly The first Merlin engines didn't just fail, they died spectacular, terrifying deaths. Here's what the history books won't tell you. The early Merlins were killers, not of enemies, but of the brave test pilots who dared to trust their lives to this temperamental beast. We're talking about catastrophic failures that turned million-dollar aircraft into falling coffins. The cooling system was a nightmare. Glycol coolant would boil, lines would burst and engines would seize at the worst possible moments. Pilots reported that temperature gauges would spike without warning, forcing emergency landings that sometimes became emergency crashes. The connecting rods, those crucial links between pistons and crankshaft, had a disturbing habit of snapping under stress. But perhaps most terrifying of all were the bearing failures. Picture this. You're flying at 300 miles per hour, 20,000 feet above enemy territory, when suddenly your engine seizes. No warning, no gradual loss of power, just instant deadly silence. This wasn't just mechanical failure, it was a death sentence written in oil and metal. The engineers worked around the clock, driven by desperation that bordered on madness. They redesigned bearings, reformulated lubricants, and tested cooling systems until their hands bled and their eyes burned. 
Because they knew something the rest of the world didn't yet understand, time was running out. Number 4. Racing Against Time By 1938, the world was rushing toward war and the Merlin was still killing pilots. We need to understand the desperation. While Hitler's war machine gathered strength across the channel, British engineers worked around the clock in a race against annihilation. Every failed test flight, every seized engine, every catastrophic bearing failure brought civilization one step closer to darkness. The pressure was crushing. Government officials demanded answers. Test pilots demanded reliability. The RAF demanded engines that could win an air war that seemed inevitable. But the Merlin seemed determined to remain a beautiful, powerful, deadly failure. Then something changed. A breakthrough in metallurgy solved the bearing problems. A redesigned cooling system tamed the overheating. New manufacturing techniques eliminated the weak points that had plagued earlier engines. It wasn't just engineering, it was engineering under the gun, with the fate of nations hanging in the balance. By early 1939, the Merlin was finally ready. Not perfect, but ready. Production ramped up just as the first shots of World War II echoed across Poland. We had built our sword just in time to use it. Number 5. The Battle That Changed the World August 1940 the sky above Britain becomes the stage for the greatest air battle in human history. We need to understand what was at stake. This wasn't just another military campaign. This was the moment when the fate of democracy itself hung in the balance. Hitler's Luftwaffe had crushed Poland, swept through France and now turned their eyes toward the green fields of England. The supermarine Spitfire, with its elliptical wings and graceful curves, was powered by the Merlin's thunderous heart. So was the rugged Hawker Hurricane, the workman's fighter that would bear the brunt of the coming storm. As we watched from bomb shelters and rooftops, these machines climbed into contested skies, carrying with them our hopes, our prayers and our future. On September 15th, the day we now call Battle of Britain Day, the Luftwaffe threw everything they had at London. Wave after wave of bombers, escorted by the finest fighters Germany could produce. But they hadn't counted on the sound that rose to meet them. The deep, defiant roar of 1,030 horses unleashed in defense of home. By sunset, the tide had turned. The Merlin hadn't just won a battle, it had saved Western civilization itself. Number 6 Beyond the Spitfire But the Spitfire was only the beginning of the Merlin's secret war. While the world's eyes were fixed on the graceful fighters dancing over Britain, the Merlin was quietly powering a hidden fleet of warriors that would reshape the entire conflict. We're talking about aircraft so advanced, so revolutionary, that their very existence was classified at the highest levels. The de Havilland Mosquito, the Wooden Wonder, combined the Merlin's power with innovative construction techniques that baffled enemy engineers. Built from wood and fabric, it could outrun fighters while carrying a bomb load that would make a B-17 pilot jealous. Twin Merlins gave it a top speed of over 400 miles per hour. But perhaps most shocking of all was the Avro Lancaster. Four Merlins mounted on a single airframe creating a heavy bomber that could carry the war directly to the heart of Nazi Germany. These weren't just bombers. They were flying fortresses that could lift 22,000 pounds of destruction. The P-51 Mustang tells perhaps the most remarkable story of all. Originally powered by an Allison engine, it was good but not great. But when British engineers mated it with a Merlin V-1650, something magical happened. Suddenly, this American fighter could escort bombers all the way to Berlin and back. The demand was about to exceed what Britain could possibly supply. Number 7. The American Gamble Britain faced a terrible choice. Share their greatest secret or watch the war slip away. By 1940, the math was brutal. The RAF needed thousands of Merlin engines, but Rolls-Royce could barely produce hundreds. German U-boats were strangling supply lines and British factories were being bombed nightly. Something desperate had to be done and fast. The solution was as brilliant as it was risky. 
Give America's Packard Motor Car Company complete access to the Merlin's most closely guarded secrets. Every blueprint, every metallurgical specification, every hard-won engineering lesson would be shared with a foreign corporation. It was industrial espionage in reverse. The deal seemed straightforward enough. Packard would mass-produce Merlins under license, using American industrial might to solve Britain's production crisis. But what nobody anticipated was the culture clash that nearly derailed everything. British precision met American mass production, and the collision was explosive. When British engineers arrived in Detroit with their carefully guarded blueprints, they discovered a problem that threatened the entire program. Every measurement was in fractions of inches, but American tooling worked in thousandths. Every tolerance had to be converted, every specification recalculated. The stakes couldn't have been higher. As London burned under German bombs, the future of the free world literally depended on whether British craftsmen and American industrialists could learn to work together. Number 8. Mass Production – Nightmare What followed was a corporate drama that made Hollywood thrillers look tame. The first Packard-built Merlins were disasters, pistons seized during testing, bearings disintegrated under load, cooling systems burst at the worst possible moments. American assembly line workers accustomed to building cars struggled with the precision demanded by aircraft engines. The cultural differences ran deeper than anyone expected. British craftsmen trained in traditions dating back centuries valued individual perfection over quantity. American workers, shaped by Henry Ford's revolution, believed that consistent quality at massive scale was the only path to victory. Both sides were right, both sides were wrong, but here's what makes this story remarkable. Instead of giving up, both cultures evolved. British engineers shared secrets they'd guarded for decades, teaching American workers the subtle arts of precision machining and quality control. American manufacturers introduced production techniques that British factories had never imagined. Slowly, painfully, the Packard Merlin emerged as something even better than the original. American metallurgy improved the alloys. Mass production techniques reduced manufacturing variations. Quality control systems caught problems before they became failures. By war's end, Packard had produced over 55,000 Merlins, more than Rolls-Royce ever built. These engines powered the P-51 Mustangs that swept German fighters from the skies and made the final victory possible. Number 9. After the Thunder When the guns fell silent, the Merlin faced its greatest challenge yet, obsolescence. Peace should have meant retirement for our mechanical hero. Jet engines were the future, everyone said. Propeller-driven aircraft were relics of a bygone era. The Merlin, for all its wartime glory, seemed destined for the scrapyard of history. But this engine had one more surprise in store for us. The transition to civilian aviation revealed the Merlin's hidden versatility. Airlines discovered that Merlin-powered aircraft could carry passengers farther, faster, and more reliably than anything else in the sky. The Avro York, powered by four Merlins, became the backbone of post-war British aviation. But the most surprising chapter came in the world of air racing. Wealthy pilots and aviation enthusiasts discovered that surplus Merlins could be modified for speeds that defied belief. These weren't just races, they were celebrations of human ingenuity and mechanical perfection. Even today, almost 80 years after the first Merlin roared to life, restored aircraft powered by these magnificent engines still take to the skies. At air shows around the world, we can still hear that distinctive sound, the deep, powerful growl that once meant salvation for millions. The Merlin had transcended its original purpose. It had become immortal. Number 10. What the Merlin Taught Us In the end, the Merlin's greatest lesson wasn't about engineering. It was about us. When we study the Merlin's legacy, we're not just examining pistons and cylinders, superchargers and cooling systems. We're looking into a mirror that reflects our own capacity for greatness when everything is on the line. This engine was born from human determination, perfected through human perseverance and deployed in defense of human freedom. 
The engineers who created the Merlin faced impossible deadlines, limited resources, and the knowledge that failure meant not just corporate embarrassment, but the possible enslavement of their entire civilization. Yet they pressed forward, working 18-hour days, sleeping on factory floors, pushing the boundaries of what was mechanically possible. The pilots who flew Merlin-powered aircraft into combat knew the engines weren't perfect. They understood the risks, felt the vibrations of components stressed beyond design limits, watched temperature gauges dance in the red zones. But they flew anyway because they believed in something greater than their own safety. This is the Merlin's true legacy, proof that when ordinary people face extraordinary challenges, they can achieve the impossible. The Rolls-Royce Merlin wasn't just an engine, it was proof that we can achieve the impossible when everything depends on it. Against all odds, a small team of engineers turned failures into victory and saved the free world. If this story of engineering triumph inspired you, hit that like button and subscribe for more incredible stories from history. What other impossible achievements would you like us to uncover together? Let us know in the comments below.